Alright, today on 5 Minute Theory we're going to look at a general overview of the French defense advance variation. And the starting moves for that are e4, e6, d4, d5, e5. And the name comes, the advance variation comes from the fact that you are not defending the pawn, as in the classical, defending the pawn, as in the Tarish, um, or capturing the pawn, as in exchange French, but we are advancing our pawn to e5. So today we're just going to have a general strategic overview of the opening, look at the main ideas, and we are also going to look at one uh, main variation um, for both colors. So already from the uh, pawn structure, the center pawn structure, we can tell what both sides' general strategic plan is. Black's pawns are pointing towards the queen side, so black will usually look for a quick play on the queen side. White's pawns are pointing towards the king side, so white is going to attack on the king side. Now, the pawn going up to e5 um, is actually very important as well. The pawn going up to e5 takes away the natural square for the knight f6, and so since the knight cannot come to f6, a lot of times the knight will end up on e7, and again, no knight on f6, the white queen can come out to g4, sometimes very early. Um, but you have to be careful with this move, as, uh, well, as we know, moving the queen early is usually a bad idea. Um, and in the advanced variation in particular, the queen can have some duties back at home. Okay, so now let's look at some real moves, uh, how both sides go about their plan. So typically black will challenge with c5 right away. And white does not want to take this pawn. First of all, that helps black develop their pieces very quickly. And second of all, it leaves the e5 pawn uh, vulnerable uh, to, in some instances, vulnerable to attack. So typically taking on c5 is a bad idea. All right, so instead, white will try to keep their center pawn chain together by playing c3, connecting the pawns. Black will continue to mount pressure. Notice that both sides are not trading yet. A good rule to follow in chess is only trade or make a capture when you can tell for sure it benefits you. It's advantageous to do so. All right, so knight f3, queen b6, adding pressure. And now one of the main lines here that I like is the move a3. So let's talk about what's happening in this opening before we look at the move a3. Sooner or later, if black does decide to capture on d4, which they can at any moment, when white captures back, white will have what's known as a backwards pawn on d4. A backwards pawn is a pawn that has no friendly pawns which can protect it, as is the case here, and also cannot move forwards very easily. Um, so the pawn on d4 can become a weakness of sorts. Okay, so. Uh, black's idea is to pressure d4. Of course, white's idea is to try to keep the d4 pawn, not lose it, and keep their center intact in a lot of cases. Um, and white's idea is to develop pieces while keeping their center together. So let's look at one of the possible variations that shows a lot of strategic um, common ideas, and that move starts with a3. Now black can play c4 here, which takes pressure off the center, that's a very bad thing. Usually we want to keep pressure, keep the tension, as we say in chess. However, it does gain space. We're not going to look at that move, though. Um, black can also continue to mount pressure on d4 by playing knight e7, headed to f5, attacking d4. Now, what white is going to do is white is going to hit black with b4 before the knight has time to get there, threatening to capture the pawn. Again, pushing c4 playable, but now it's much worse. White should immediately respond with a4, gaining space on the queen side. And uh, white is probably much better here already. Instead, black should make a capture. Now, not this capture. Uh, the a-file is uh, advantageous. And not only that, but the d4 pawn is secure for a long time. Instead, c takes d4, c takes d4. Now we see black's pressure. Okay, And after knight f5, white has a choice of defending the pawn in two ways. Bishop b2 is a playable move, and bishop e3 is a playable move. We will look at both quickly. Bishop b2, guarding the pawn, and now if black continues develop, development normally like bishop e7, um, some interesting tactics can come up. Uh, after, for example, um, even the move here, knight c3, uh, is playable. Let's take a look. Knight takes, knight takes. Stuff like this is going on. Okay, And now there's an interesting play here. Knight takes d5 we might see some very wild tactics going where both knights actually are going to go and take the rook and probably end up getting lost. The pawns are equal. This could get interesting, but okay. There's a more solid way to play. White, of course, can also just develop with a move like bishop e2. Bishop d3 is playable as well. 
Um, one of the points here is that if knight takes, there's a very problematic trap. Check, discovering an attack, and uh, whoops, black has lost their queen. Okay, so that's how bishop b2 may play out. Let's go back and look at white's other option, bishop e3, is a second choice. Um, now, as we know, bishops are better than knights, so uh, why is white trading the bishop here willingly? Well, after the trade, white gains two things. Number one, the d4 pawn is secure, guarded by another pawn, uh, therefore no longer backwards, it's a strong pawn. Number two, the f-file is half open, so sometimes white can attack on this f-file. Now, black can immediately go f6, actually, and it looks like this is bad because it opens the king, but on the other hand, the black bishop on h6 becomes quite strong um, in a lot of variations. This could occur. Okay, uh, Black does not have to go immediately f6, but this is a common challenge to white's pawn center in the French. For example, black could develop first, perhaps even develop on the queen side, bishop d7, idea rook c8. It could also develop on the king side, bishop e7, although as we've already seen, sometimes the bishop prefers to go here. In any case, white wants to go knight c3, with some ideas of knight a4 to c5, also pressuring d5. Um, let's just play out a sample variation, bishop e3, f6. Typically, the best way to meet this f6 challenge is to take. Okay, we're going to castle. And again, you can see some of the thematic ideas. We both have a backwards pawn here. Uh, neither of us can really advance it because of the weakness of the d pawn. Uh, black has the two bishops in a fairly open board. White does have slightly more space on the king side. The knight is nice. This knight can hop into c5. And also the bishop on c8 has not really decided what it wants to do yet. For example, bishop d7. Um, well, okay, still stuck in, guarding its uh, pawn on e6. Hasn't found use yet. In the long term, the two bishops can become powerful. But in the short term, white has some moves to play. Um, all right, this has been a general strategic overview of the French defense advanced variation for both colors, black and white. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Five minute theory, please remember to uh, subscribe, rate the video if you want, and leave a comment if you wish.